Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm doing a follow-up because I think it's necessary for this $250,000 robot scale that I did a video on earlier this week. I'm going to go over and do some clarifications and um, maybe show you guys a little bit about one of my viewers and what they said. I think he's very accurate on this one. It changes the whole structure of how this thing works. It actually makes it a little bit cooler. So let's go ahead and let's check that out. I'm going to read what he said and I've got um, the scale right here in front of me and we will see if it matches what he says. I think it does for the most part. Okay guys, here is the scale and right here are the comments on my prior video. And the comment was by Zia Prod K, Zaprod K. And it says this scale is not using a load cell, which after looking it over really carefully, I agree. It's a balance and the counterweight is an electromagnet. Without power applied, there's no counterweight. The small slit is the actual sensing element. Okay, I, I see some evidence of that. And then it says down here, load cells have lots of drift, which is problematic. Now, I definitely agree with that. Controlling the high current through electromagnet with a high resolution digital analog converter, DAC, is the way this is done. The current is ramped up and down until the balance point is found when the optical interrupter is picking up the change. That I'm definitely seeing. How cool is this? This is why I love uh, social media and people actually give me real answers. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do this with one hand. So there is uh, there is definitely an electromagnet and that's why this thing's such a pain in the butt to get off. Come on. I don't want to break it. I guess it doesn't really matter. There we go. So there is definitely a magnet down in here. Okay, let's see. Oop. See, it's very strong. So the base is a magnet. And one of the things I've noticed is right here, there was a coil that was going in and around. And I believe that this guy is wrapped. It is a coil. And it is going to find a balance point based on, uh, it's probably going to oppose the magnetic pole of whatever the permanent magnet is that's in there. There's definitely a permanent magnet right there. So it's going to, um, it's probably gonna be the same polarity and that is going to force this little lever up, which causes it to find a balance point. Now, what I thought was a load cell, if it was a load cell uh, on the underside, which I can't see, I would expect there to be sensing, um, well here, let's, let's pull it up load cell okay so on a load cell there are going to be um, some flex points which is what I shared you know right here and right here and I did a whole video on this about how load cells function and I was a little bit confused on this one although you know you can tell this one here you know it's going to have a thinner and thinner area based on the sensitivity that's necessary. Like this one here is going to be a very hefty load cell. This one here is going to be extremely sensitive to changes. Now I did not see the wires coming off of this bad boy and I could not see the bottom. See, I can't see down under there. So I was automatically thinking that maybe the load cell properties were on the bottom. I was correct about these divots being drilled out for balance points. But what this is, is it's actually two levers and they're opposing levers. You see how one is right here and one of them's right here. That's why there's two fasteners and two fasteners. Now this one here is a limiter screw. It's not a calibration screw. It's just a limiter to keep this, you know, probably center point. Um, and, and what these cutouts are doing here, let's see if I can get the camera nice and steady. You can see that one of them screwed into that section and one of them screwed into this upper section you see it right there now that means that this guy right here this little tiny sliver that is joined right behind those wires that is the lever and it's extremely sensitive that's why you know it doesn't take very much force to move this it's extremely sensitive based on the laws of leverage we got two opposing levers and you can see down here I have the same thing going on down here in the aluminum block you see how there's two other levers that are kind of cut in. Very interesting. How cool. So there is an electromagnet down on here. And what he's saying is it will come up 
and it will find a balance point and you have a digital analog converter, which I can't really see because there's this card, um, there's this casting in the way. So that means that the DAC would probably be right here on this card. So I would assume that this is just a data bus line out to the computer. This one here, however, is a counterweight. That's why this one here is on some guides and it's also on uh, like an eccentric cam. So when I put power on this motor, which I had it energized at just three and a half volts, it rotates and it raises and lowers this weight right here, which is on this lever. So you got this lever up here and then you have this lever down here and they're counteracting each other. And what he's saying is between this one and this one, it finds a balance point. And then based on the weight that you put on this guy, it has to um, pulse to find the balance again. You understand what I'm saying? So um, it finds a zero. And then when you put weight on it, it pulses energy through here. And based on uh, the value of the digital analog converter, that is going to be your value. So when you tear it, it's probably going to move this guy here until it finds a zero point. And then you put your load on it and it's going to pulse that electromagnetic coil until it finds that same zero balance point. How cool is that? Anyway, I thought that this definitely warranted a revisit because Zabprod K, Zabprod K, whoever this person is, thank you so much. That is so cool. And I wanted to come back out and take another look at this guy. There are no load cells on this aluminum block. It is literally just a lever. It is a lever mechanism that allows this lever and this lever to counteract each other and find a zero point. And here we have four wires and these four wires go down to this coil. So that means that there are two separate coils inside this head right here as I'm understanding it. So cool. Now, I, I would like to disassemble this guy all the way so that you guys could see more about what I'm talking about. There's so many different fasteners in there. And I've got so many other production items that I've got to worry about. I just haven't had the time to uh, do really, really detailed um, investigations into some of these. How cool is that? Anyway, guys, it's just one of those things. Uh, when I said something... Uh, I'm going to leave that video up there because it was it was definitely a correction and it warranted a whole second video because in reality, this is so much cooler than a load cell and it's so much more precise because uh, a load cell would have to be extremely, extremely sensitive in order to handle the milligrams. And what he's talking about is the float of um, all the different elements inside a load cell because the value are, are going to be constantly moving around, it would never be stable enough for pharmaceutical use. And that is why we have a balance scale. Oh, cool. Anyway, thought it warranted a revisit and that's why I'm doing this video. Thank you, ZadProdK. Uh, I appreciate the input and I hope to hear your input on future videos because that's the goal of this channel is just to make sure that everybody gets the right idea on technology and I stand corrected. It's okay, because uh, now we know the correct answer. Thanks for watching, guys.